um, and um, I want to say a big hello to the guys in the studio, the ones in the foyer, and also everyone watching online. My name is Alexander Loderstein. I was born in Argentina uh, to uh, Polish migrant parents. Um, and travel has always been uh, something that's been very close to me. Um, I was lucky enough with my um, sister, my little brother, uh, to travel around the world with my parents. And um, it, was, um, it was something amazing, you know, seeing culture, people, how they behave, um, you know, experiencing different languages, you know, visiting my grandparents in, in Poland and Europe, or living in Brazil, um, taught me a lot. And um, so when I, um, when I um, turned 15, I went to, I went traveling. And, um, you know, did South America and also, you know, Europe and, you know, came all the way to Australia. Um, it showed me that even though the world is an amazing, diverse place, there's things, elements that connect us all, you know, you know and it almost comes down to the most um, basic of humans, human emotions and, and functions. And um, this is something that I've, that I've concentrated uh, with the work I do. I'm a designer. I design ideas, and today in the TED stage, uh, I want to design out inequality. Um, I want to bring something to you. Um, I'm pretty interested about how culture has shaped the world and how design has the potential to, pot to potentially change the world for a better place. Um, I want to put a few ideas to you today um, and to be able to bring the developing world in equal partnership with the developed world. I want the developing world to leapfrog from our mistakes, you know, really go far and beyond and not try to follow uh, the mistakes that we've committed. I know it's a big ask, but let's give it a go. Um, We've, in our culture, we've, you know, we've, we, we're kind of realizing that we cannot uh, go on living like this, you know, using the world's resources, uh, you, know, you know, driving cars that consume a lot of petrol. We're realizing that, you know, there's other ways of going about it. And um, we have the power to steer change, you know, by the products that we buy to the products that we consume. Take, for example, Nike, um, you know, a company that you know, everyone you know, kind of assumes that it's, um, you know, that it's um, you know, sort of consumerism. But it's really interesting that even a company like that, it's taking recycling into a, into a different level. You know, they have this range of shoes called Nike Considerate uh, with about 80% of, of, um, of content. Or, for example, this Emeco chair, really basic examples of how companies are really trying to, to sort of join in and in the bandwagon of, 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 of really becoming more sustainable. We have electric cars, obviously. Uh, there's a lot of talk about that. Or even farmers markets, you know, like the organic mar you know, market that we just have uh, this morning here. Uh, community gardens, like this one in Brooklyn. This is a picture I took uh, when I was with my girlfriend uh, you know, a couple of months ago. Um, or even down to, you know, organic cookies for pets. I mean. Uh, you know, that's how far we're going. Or, or even this one, imagine this one, yeah? showing up at the bank and saying, I want to get rid of my credit card debt and, you know, I'm playing the blues or something, I don't know. Um, then there's also political examples. Um, you know, we have the famous uh, carbon tax that everyone's talking about. We have um, rebate schemes for solar panels, um, wind power, we have um, we have um, in the greening of, of rooftops uh, all around the world, uh, of civic, civic buildings and also star rating. We also have uh, bicycle schemes uh, around, dotted around the world. Uh, this is uh, one that I took a picture from, uh, from my studio um, of uh, City Cycle by Brisbane City Council. Um, so where I come from with all these examples is that these changes are design solutions and are driven by, I guess, a shift in our thinking. I thinking that it's key to the changes that we are facing in the 21st century. Um, 
Um, let's talk about design. I mean, this is my expertise, I guess. Um, I'm very passionate about this. I don't think, and this is sort of where I'm coming from, design is not about what you hold in your hands, but it's, it's, um, it's a way of approaching things and coming up with a solution. It's not about what you hold in your hands, but it's, also, but it's about an attitude. We've been fascinating with, the, with flying from, a, you know, since ever, you know, from the legend of the Birdman in Easter Island to Da Vinci, the Wright brothers, the A380, the shuttle. This obsession about flying has made us come up with design solutions to make it happen and go all the way to the moon and back. Uh, how fantastic is that? Could we implement this type of obsession and this type of attitude to take, to create a new platform to make this world a better place, smarter, more sustainable, etc. Social media, it's a very important part of, of this process, you know. Why we are, uh, why I believe that we have the possibility to do so nowadays is that we've never been more open to the idea of sharing our ideas, our thoughts, our likes and dislikes. You know, we have uh, Twitter, we have Facebook, we have TED, we have blogs. Um, we have SMS, we have, um, you know, FaceTime. What, what I'm saying with this is that we've become ambassadors. All of us have become ambassadors of our lifestyle and our culture. And we have a great opportunity, all of us, to, I guess, shape the world for a better place. So I say, like it, Facebook it, <laughs> tweet it, and tell it. Um, Let's talk about brands. Here are a few examples of brands. Um, brands are very important. They are a stepping stone into designing out inequality. Yeah? Um, some of the best examples, um, what I want to inspire in the developing world is to take some of the best examples that we in the developed world have created you know, through products and ideas that, we, that, really, that really relate to our culture. Say fast food, for example, immediately, you know, you think about, you know, America, for example, you know, but obviously this is now changing because we, we you know, shaping into a, into a better lifestyle. But what about the Vespa or the Ferrari, you know, like, you will know that this is Italy, yeah? Um, or Ikea, you know, the simple Scandinavian design. Um, the Germans with their perfectionism and engineering. <laughs> or of France with their joy of living. Um, they're all products and, and, and designs that relate very closely to culture. Um, what about even chopsticks, you know? How, who could have thought that because of lifestyle and food, and, uh, we would have gone through the trouble of learning how to use two sticks, you know? And, and it's, it's, it's just amazing. I'm just so passionate about how culture and products and how culture and design relate to each other. Um, we are in a, in an, we're living in a world at the moment that has inspired us to think that we are kind of, you know, we are setting the trends. But what I'm thinking is that culture and, um, and um, the developing world has so much to teach us, you know. They have been they are probably the most sustainable um, and smarter in terms of recycling than anyone, you know? And they do it not because it's fashionable, but because it's, it's a necessity. It's not trendy, it's a necessity. Imagine if we could collaborate with these people and we will all, we'll both benefit, you know? We'll learn so much from them. There's a few examples. I mean, toys made out of, out of cans of Coke or, you know, or hats made out of um, out of um, weeds. Oliver Tate's a company that has taken Africa, an African shoe company that has gone global. And this is the amazing thing about, you know, the, 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 the age that we live in, you know, about internet sales, you know. I bought these shoes. These are made in Ethiopia by Oliver Tate. Amazing. They've gone from selling 200 pairs of shoes in 2005 or 2009 to 18,000 pairs this year alone. The great thing about it is that not about the it's, it's not about the volume, but it's proving that 
there is business to be done in, in Africa. And it's, this, these products are designed entirely in Africa and manufactured in Africa. Another project that it's taken me, it's taken me to Africa. I collaborated with a, with a, with a foundation called in Africa, in Africa Foundation. And uh, the products that you see here, are just a taste of the, the collaboration that I did with this um, community. It's the Shlavisa community in, um, in South Africa. And they are, they are by far one of the best weavers I've seen in the world. Um, the products are 100% natural. They have, um, the dyes are sourced naturally from the riverbanks. They grind the, you know, the stones and make dyes. Um, what an amazing example of collaboration between a thousand old year old techniques uh, and, 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 you know, and the experience of a designer. I wanted to bring fun function to the craft objects in order to increase, in order to increase their income, and, um, but also to communicate to the world um, what they believe in and what their culture is about through the products that they produce. Look at those hands, amazing, isn't it? Um, Pro Pueblo, the last, the, one of the latest product, projects that I did was um, with Pro Pueblo, a fair trade organization in Ecuador. Um, this organization works with about 400 artisans, and Nestle um, invited me to collaborate with them in the design of a new corporate gift. Um, it was an amazing experience, not only because we, um, I was collaborating with a sort of multinational, but also because it, it allowed people to have, to grow not only um, at, um, economically, but also almost at, at a spiritual level. You know, it was actually empowering them to believe that their work is cherished. And some of these gifts are going to be going to some more very important people and spread the message. This is the tagua nut. It looks like a potato, but when it dries, it looks like ivory. Um, this is the work of um, um, the Canning Stock Group project. It's uh, a friend of mine, Carly Davenport, has been working in, on it for the last four years. It's a merge between um, contemporary art, uh, traditional art, and semi-industrial weaving techniques. Um, it's a collaboration between FORM, the National Museum of Australia, and the uh, Australian Tapestry Workshop. Um, they've selected five um, artists to collaborate in this tapestry that's going to go all, all the way to, uh, to the Vatican, uh, which is an amazing example of collaboration uh, here in Australia. And how can we take these types of collaborations mainstream? I think we can, yeah? Well, let's do it. Um, Husk, for example, it's, it's a company in Brisbane that recycles uses waste from the macadamia industry and recycles them into beautiful objects, from a, a beautiful functional objects. These this products sell all around the world. There's, there's an example here. Absolutely beautiful. This is a waste material. Um, and um, it just shows that there's so many opportunities, so many different avenues. So I want to, I want to invite you all to contribute to come to talk to me and talk to each other about the potential of, of, of collaborating, of taking, stepping out of the usual sort of business models that we are in and try to start including different ways of, of going about what we do and how we go about it. Um, small changes in physics and biology, small changes have large effects in complex systems. I believe this is true. We can all, as individuals, make a change. And through the collaborative effort of us all, change can really be done. Let's, let's, make, a, let's make, for the 21st century, let's make a new way of thinking, a new way of designing. Um, Let's make it happen, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks so much.